Oh, that looks nice. Budget smartphones have come a long way in the last couple of years and New Mobile is definitely on the forefront of this change. And today we have their newest release, the New Mobile G5, which looks to be a beast for the least amount of money. The packaging definitely doesn't look like a budget phone, I can tell you that much. They got a ton of colors here, really making it pop, drawing your attention in. It does feature multi-lens photography, which has a 16 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel secondary camera, and two 2 megapixel third and fourth degree cameras. <laughs> what? I don't know what I just said, but I'm not sure which cameras are what megapixel count because it doesn't say, but all I know for sure is the 16 megapixels, the main camera. We have a 6.55 inch notchless HD plus display that's going to be 720p and it's notchless, but it does have a little punch hole for the 16 megapixel front facing selfie camera. We have an ultra capacity 5000 milliamp hour battery that offers up to 20 hours of video playback, 17 hours of web browsing, 33 hours of talk time and 124 hours of standby time. This model does feature four gigabytes of RAM along with 64 gigabytes of storage, so it's not that high, although it can be expanded with a micro SD card. We are looking at a plethora of LTE bands, so it should work well on most carriers. And it even offers dual SIM card support in case you want to have two lines on the same phone. Oh, that's really cool. It came with an ultra mobile SIM card with one free month with five gigabytes of 4G LTE included, along with unlimited talks, text, and data. Hmm, did not see that coming. Definitely gonna use this. Whoa, hold up. This box right here reminds me of Apple quality when you open it. It's so smooth. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there we are. We're greeted with the phone right here on top. Ooh, it has some nice weight to it. It feels very good in the hands. Let's put it out of the side real quick. Also inside the box, I have a SIM ejection tool. Wait, what? You get a $50 credit at New Mobile if you are open to a telephone interview? Never seen that before. Oh, we got some new mobile stickers. A getting started guide. Oh, nice. It even came with a case in the box. Nice smoky case looking good because you know it's always going to be hard to find cases for phones like these. A USB A to USB C charging cable. Very nice to see. Some EarPod style earphones. Nice. And an AC power adapter. We are looking at 5 volts and 2 amps. So that's definitely something. This phone costs, what, like a tenth of an iPhone, and it comes with a power adapter, headphones, and USB Type-C. Although it's not Type-C to Type-C, so I guess they got you there. Although it's Type-C on the main end that matters, so... Eh. All right, so now let's slide the phone on out. Ooh, this actually looks very nice. This phone feels so nice in the hands. So smooth. Oh, look at this back. What is this, dark blue? Maybe a hint of purple? Like that's looking nice. I'm not well you can see it, but it just shimmers. Definitely a fingerprint magnet getting all smudged up, but wow, just look at that design. This looks so premium. Wow. And of course we gotta try it out with the included case. Well, it's a really tight fit. There we go, we got it on. Adds a bit of grip to it, definitely. Nice silicone case. It actually looks really good with the case on. Like, you can barely tell it's on there. That looks nice. Look at that. Wow. I'm impressed. I mean, look at the screen, too. That's a big screen. All right, let me take off the case. It's just really tight. It's not going to be falling off on its own, for sure. Over on the back, we are looking at the ultra-wide AI camera setup. We have an LED flash along with four different lenses here. Fingerprint sensor right here on the back with a nice matte finish. New mobile branding right here in the middle. That nice design, though. I can't get over that. I think it's glass too, like it feels good. Is it glass? Might not be glass, I don't know, I, I honestly can't tell. And then over here on the front, this is where we got the 16 megapixel punch hole selfie camera on the left side of the screen. Up top we do have the earpiece and literally not much else to see on the front. Down here on the bottom we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB-C, and a speaker grill. Over on the right side we have the volume rocker along with the power button. Over on the left side the SIM card and micro SD card slot. Up top we got nothing. And overall, this is a very nice design. Like if I didn't know any better, I definitely wouldn't think this was under 200 bucks. So let's get this phone powered on real quick. Let's see how this looks. Oh, there we go. Well, that screen actually looks very nice. Oh, hold up, hold up. There's, is that, is that? Okay, I'm kind of confused here. I took off the film. It might be really hard for you to tell, but I think there's another screen protector on. You can kind of see the borders going around the side. And I was trying to pick up the corners here and it's, 
it's either on there really good or that's actually part of the screen although i do see how it cuts it out so i'm not sure but that's really nice if it is a screen protector usually it's the film or a screen protector never both so the screen does look very nice we do have a bit of a chin here a little bit of a forehead not too much the chin is a bit on the bigger side although that's to be expected with budget phones uh, not really a fan of the vibration motors when you're typing it feels very cheap You know once you go to an iPhone with their haptic engine and you go to something like this It's a major difference, but if you don't care about that it won't really bother you All right now let's get our fingerprint set up to see how good this thing actually is All right got some nice haptic feet got some nice haptic feedback every time you touch it registering very quickly All right, looks good. Oh wow, look at this screen. That's so vibrant. Look at all those colors. That looks nice. All right, so we are in the phone. We've got the news over here on the left. A little bit of jitter, but we did just set it up, so that's usually to be expected as it's downloading and installing everything. Huh, very loud speaker. That notification got me. What time is it in New York? The time in New York, New York is 8.04 p.m. on Tuesday. Has some good volume, not the highest quality sound, but it's definitely passable. Let's check out this camera. That's what I want to see real quick. Let's see. You know what? Camera's not looking too bad, actually. Got the AI camera on. Let's take a picture of this box. So that's a regular photo. Then we have Super HD. That one's still loading it. Like, I don't know what's taking so long with that one. It's processing and processing. That one took about 10 seconds to process. To be fair, I don't know, it looks the same as the regular one. Picture looks okay. We have a pro mode so you can get into all the settings. We have video. You can shoot up to 1080p full HD, also even GIFs too, that's pretty cool. So let's actually get a video. All right, so right here is a fully unedited raw 1080p video of the new G5. Let's get it around on me. This phone's actually very slippery without the case on, so I probably should be putting that on right now so I don't drop it, because I don't know if the back's glass yet. Kind of sounds like plastic though, so I don't think it would break, but the screen could break. So anyways though, this is a 100% unedited video, unedited audio. Let me know what you guys think of it. Let me know how it looks. Spin around a little bit. Let's get kind of close. Does it focus well on my hand? Let's get this box up here. See if the white balance gets thrown off. See if you can focus quickly. You guys let me know what you guys think. You know, this video doesn't look too bad actually. The audio is very loud and clear, although it is only coming out of the right side, which is a bit annoying. I'm used to having stereo sound coming out of both sides, so right now I can hear it. It's like, wait, it's way over here. There's nothing over here. What's going on? Although it does sound good, it actually looks very impressive. I'm impressed. Oh, we have HDR mode, although it is only for photos. Let's try this out, because there's a lot of color on this box. Uh, it has a bit more color, although it doesn't really look super crazy. I mean, it looks all right. Okay, we have a night mode, too. I want to try this out. Hey, turn off the studio lights. Okay, we're literally in complete darkness. I don't think it's made for this, but let's try it out. Okay, definitely nothing. Okay, and this time we have a little bit of light from some candles. Let's see how it can do this. Yeah, you can see stuff, but nothing great. I think I'm trying to push this a little bit too far. Here we go with a little bit of light. It's pretty dim. Let's see if it can turn this into magic. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Not the best night mode I've ever seen, but hey, turn the studio lights back on. It's dark in here. Okay, turning two lights on. Yeah, that's a lot better. And now that we got some light, we got to take some selfies real quick. So we'll start off with a photo. You know what? The 16 megapixel selfie camera actually looks pretty good. Let me get a shot real quick. It's weird looking over to the left, but this picture though, actually not too bad. I'm actually pretty impressed, the quality's there. And now here we go with a 16 megapixel front facing selfie video, you know, right now actually looking pretty good colors are looking good got the blue lights in the background you can see all the detail my shirt's nice and dark black well, hold on wait a minute changing a little bit mm -hmm. exposure is changing and shifting around that's a little eh. it's a little iffy right there but overall the quality looks good i'm actually impressed i just have to look down here in the corner otherwise i'll be looking way over here yeah that'd be weird what do you guys think so when it comes to the cameras we have the different lenses we have the regular camera here and then we have the wide, oh, that's a really wide angle. Do you see the difference? Let's turn that back to regular. Look how close we are. It's barely fitting in the frame. Turn the wide angle on and bam, all that space. There we go. We got lights in the background. So it actually turned out pretty good. Looking nice. Not too much distortion, looking good. Now it's only letting me switch between the wide angle and the regular. So maybe there's only two actual cameras. I'm not sure what's going on. So there's four different cameras right maybe the other ones are just for depth speaking of depth how do you do a portrait mode there we go portraits up here and now let's take a portrait shot of this box if we can and did it do it 
Yeah, I can see some blur around the edges a little bit, but let's take one of me because it's probably best used on people. And you know what? It's actually pretty impressive. You could definitely tell that it's a fake bokeh, but really, it actually did a good job cutting me out. Although around the edges, if you look closely, I don't know why the blur is different than the rest of the blur. Like, that's just what makes it look obviously fake, but it did do a very good job of cutting me out. It looks like we could actually do portrait mode with the front camera too. Let's try it. You know what? Looks about the same. Around my ear, you can see it clipped it a little bit, and also it got rid of all my hair that I have. <laughs> so it's not the best, but it's actually passable. I mean, if you're just posting on Instagram or Snapchat or something, definitely will get the job done. Oh, and here we go. I found more modes. We have GIF, we have beauty. Let's try beauty real quick. Oh, you can actually customize everything. Do whitening, eye enlarging, slimming, smoother, auto beauty. I wonder what I would look like. Uh, I don't know, it looks kind of... Uh, I can see the smoothness happening, but it looks pretty normal, really. Let me take one just straight on. Yeah, you can definitely tell that it's filtered up and everything, but, you know, I guess it is what it is. So we have GIFs, filters, beauty, panoramic, slow motion, time lapse, intelligent scanning, and macro. So there's the other lens. You have to go find it in there. So let's actually test the macro mode with this dollar bill. Or something that we want to get close up on. Let's get close up on George Washington. Yeah, not too bad. Got really close on there with some detail. You can zoom in there and see all the little ink blotches and all that good stuff. Not bad. So overall, the cameras are actually not bad. They're definitely good enough to get the job done if you're just using it for social media and all that good stuff. Now, let's see if we have any bloatware on here. We have all the Google apps, of course, FM radio, live support from New Mobile. That's actually very nice to have. Wow. I'm impressed. No bloatware, just all the Google apps, YouTube, YouTube Music, Sound Recorder, really everything that you would want to download is on here. Nothing, no games, no Facebook, none of that stuff. I'm impressed. I expected a bunch of stuff I wouldn't want. But let's go into the settings and see what we got to work with here. We have mobile networks, SIM cards, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, hotspot and tethering, more network settings with VPNs and all that good stuff. We have the display, we could change the wallpaper, brightness, nightlight, adaptive brightness. Wallpaper, dark theme, let's get it on dark mode. Oh, dark mode looks nice. We'll just turn it back to regular mode just for the video. Screen timeout, font size, screen saver, screen color mode, lock screen display, casting, printing, face ID. So if you want to use your face to unlock it, it's not super secure, but it's definitely more convenient unless you're wearing a mask. Although I think this one would actually work with a mask on because it's just taking a picture. Although to think about it, that would be even less secure than just a regular picture. We have fingerprint, navigation bar, so you can actually use the buttons. You can change the color. Wow, I've never seen this. You can literally pick any color you want for the bottom row of buttons. That's pretty nice. You can also hide the bar, and you can also use gestures. I never really liked the gestures on Android. Let's see how they work. See, like, it's just not smooth enough for me. Look at that. Like, it's always a bit of a delay. Like, on iPhones, it's buttery smooth, so it works. But on Android, I never get the hang of it. So I'll just go to virtual keys, like always. And we'll just have some fun with it. Let's get yellow. A color that no one would suspect. It's a bright yellow. <laughs> we have sound settings, we have media volume, call volume, ring volume, alarm volume, vibrate for calls, do not disturb, phone ringtones, sound enhancement. Oh, so it'll boost the volume for the speaker and that's automatically on, no wonder it was so loud. You can have dial pad tones on and off, screen locking sounds, charging sounds of vibration, touch sounds, touch vibration, all that stuff. This is highly customizable. Apps and notifications, of course, you know, simple stuff. Battery, intelligent assistance, flip to silence, so you can flip the phone over to silent an incoming call, anti-fake touch mode to prevent touches while it's in your pocket, three finger screenshots, so you just swipe down with three fingers to take a screenshot, that's convenient, three finger skid start split screen, so you can start split screen with three fingers, sensor calibration, jump to camera by pressing the power button twice from any screen, that's cool, lift to wake, so, oh yeah, I want that on, so let's put it to sleep, lift it up. Oh, there it goes, it woke up, that's pretty cool. Use the fingerprint and it unlocks right away. We have privacy settings, permissions manager, show passwords, autofill service from Google, Google location history, all that stuff. Security options, we have Google Play Protect, we have security update from June 5th, 2020, so it's about five months old right now. Find my device, Google Play system updates, app lock so you can lock apps to require a fingerprint to access them, which is nice. 
I really wish iPhones would have that for every app. That'd be great. Screen lock with a pin. You can have smart lock, so it'll keep it unlocked while it's on your body or while it's connected to your smartwatch. Device admin apps, encryption and credentials, screen pinning, smart touch, gesture mode, menu mode, single click. Oh, smart, well look at that. That's just like, <laughs> smart touch is just like accessibility options on iPhones. Okay, looks exactly the same too. I'm liking that. Digital well-being and parental controls, Google services, Dura speed. That's on. I guess it has a rocket ship, so I guess it makes things faster. We have system and about. So let's see. We have 55 gigabytes of free space with nothing installed yet. You can choose to back up the phone, date and time. Now, where do we go? Let's see if we have an update here. Wireless update. Oh, we do have an update. Minor bug fixes and security patches for September 2020. So it has a security patch from about two months ago. So not bad. They're actually keeping it updated. And you can shake it to download. That's actually pretty cool. So overall, this phone's very impressive. No bloatware whatsoever. Just all the Google apps that you would already probably want if you're in the Google ecosystem to begin with. Very vibrant screen looking so nice. Fast fingerprint sensor. Look at this. Just like that. Watch screen off. It was a little bit of a delay when, for the screen to turn on, although it did register quickly because you could feel the vibration, but when the screen's on, instant unlock, very nice. So the screen's nice, fingerprint works very well, it looks super premium and nice, has all these cameras, the cameras are actually very good quality, I'm impressed with them, and really this is a good phone, I mean, I mean it has a punch hole camera on the front, four cameras on the back, although I think I only used three of them, I'm still not, I think the other one's just for depth information maybe, and it was actually doing a decent job with depth, I'm impressed. So overall, this is a good budget phone right here, I'm surprised that the cameras actually look pretty good, and it's very smooth so far, the gestures, you know, with every Android phone I've tried with gestures it hasn't been that good, so you know, if you get used to them, maybe, but if you come from an iPhone where it's super smooth, come into this, and be like, yo, it's kind of laggy, I don't like it. Look at that, apps open up quickly, go to the Play Store, opens up right away, let's go to YouTube, Everything's opening up quickly. Look at that. And you know what? Let's play a video real quick so we can see how good this looks. It allows me to go up to 720p of quality because it does have a 720p display. Let's get it playing. Okay, why won't this go away? Make it full screen. Oh, that looks nice. Wow, definitely looks good. I'm impressed. So yeah, overall, this phone, I can definitely recommend if you're looking for a cheap phone. I mean, you could customize it out of the box like crazy. Like, what other phone lets you change the bottom color? Like, I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool, although I don't know what color I would do. I'd probably just have it black, to be honest. Maybe white, depending on if we're dark mode or light mode. But wow, overall, this phone is very good. Definitely recommend it. Let me know if you guys are gonna pick one up. Let me know if you guys wanna see some more on this phone. And if you do have it, let me know how you've been liking it, because so far, I'm digging it. Oh, <laughs>